welcome to my first unboxing video here on YouTube. So I've got this package in the mail today. So I've upgraded uh, or did some lens buying. But I have also bought a new camera, an additional camera to my arsenal. And that is the OM system OM1. Uh, so you've probably seen in the description already what's inside here. But when I got the news about this lens, I was already intrigued and I was thinking, yeah, okay, I'm gonna buy an extra camera. I'm gonna buy an OM1 because I have been wanting to have one of these for a little while. And it, I, f I find this camera to be really amazing uh, at, at what it can do. So my main focus with this camera here is gonna be vlogging. So I'm gonna do some vlogging with this camera. But I also gonna have it as like a tiny backup for small trips where I need something light to carry as well as macro. So in this box is the new OM system 90mm macro. Just first off the bat, this box is super light. I am kinda almost like worried if the lens is not inside it because it feels so light. But let's start with some unpacking here. This is just gonna be like a quick unboxing and then after this I'm gonna take it out uh, for a spin and test it out in the fields. So you can stay tuned for that later. But first off, let's see what's inside. This is of course the paper of uh, what's inside the box. Oof, that's a small box. This is also one of the new boxes I've heard about where they have a little bit more recycled material or, or what you call uh, boxing. It's kind of cool. Simple design. I thought it was going to be bigger to be honest. The box. Let's see. Here it is. Wow, it's actually much smaller than I realized it was going to be. Oi, oi, oi. I thought it was going to be bigger, like seriously. Look at that. So this is also with a lens hood. I have seen in some uh, previous uh, Olympus models that the lens is not with, but since this is a pro version, I it is common that the lens hood is with. So luckily I don't have to pay extra for lens hood. And here it seems to be the lens bag. Really soft. Is it a lens bag? Oh, okay. So this is a whole new type of lens bag, it seems. It's not the standard one that I've seen before. And it's quite soft material. Alright, so this is the lens. Wow. Okay, let's put it on. It doesn't look so big. I'm actually quite surprised. Look at that! So this is a two times, uh, uh, what do you call it, like a macro two times enhancement, or what do you call it in English? Two times fosterelse, as we call it in Norwegian. And uh, yeah, I'm looking really forward to trying this out. It's really good material. Uh, it's metal and plastic, so it's, uh, it's like a combination of metal and plastic. And it also has this amazing uh, manual focus switch clutch, you call it here. The amazing thing with this is that it is uh, such a big macro, it's like 180 millimeter full frame macro, and it has a two times uh, magnification, uh, and it has autofocus, as well as I can put on um, teleconverters. Right now I am I have bought the 1.4 teleconverter converter. I do not own the two times, but I don't think uh, I want the two times. Like I have had the two times before, and I find it to be really soft in all the lenses I've tried it. And I don't see me doing any like super super magnification macro at all, like four times. It's a little bit too extreme for me. 1.4 is enough, I think. So now I'm going to try this out, out in the fields. Uh, I do not own a flash, so this is going to be without flash. 
uh, and I'm just gonna test it out, see if I can get some amazing pictures with this, maybe even video actually. And yeah, just uh, have fun with it. The also amazing thing is that is, this is also weather sealed, it has the splash proof and this whole... Uh, does it actually stand here What? the... Uh, no, it doesn't stand the... Uh, what type of uh, weather sealing it has, but it has this kind of IP... I heard IP56 or something, I'll leave the real number somewhere around here. They have, they have their own coding for it. But yeah, I'm gonna take it out and have a spin with it and hopefully capture some amazing pictures and videos for you guys. So stay tuned. All right, I am now out in the field testing my new uh, 90 millimeter macro lens. I have to say, I this is probably not the right time of the year to do macro because it's like early, early spring. And I have really struggling, uh, or I am really struggling finding anything to photograph. So I think the best time for this is probably when the mushrooms are coming, like in late summer, autumn. That would probably be really cool with this lens. But for now, I'm gonna test it, try to find different subjects. It's also raining a little bit right now, so hopefully I'll find something with a little bit of raindrops on it or something. But yeah, it gives me uh, opportunity to challenge myself at least, to find subjects or find elements to photograph. But I have to say, it's a little bit hard. But I'm also really new to macro, I do not do much macro. So it's kind of a totally new type of photography for me. So it's kind of interesting, so let's see what I can find. But for now I'm trying to find this kind of small, unique looking grass maybe around here maybe some moss on tree branches as well over here uh, so yeah I'll, I think I'll try and see what I can find at least give it a try uh, but what I am doing right now is that I'm having the focus stack I'm testing out the focus stack function in this camera so I'm doing um, 15 different stacks where where every picture has a little bit slightly different focus so it's stacking all those 50 pictures together so the whole subject hopefully the whole subject will be in focus because it's really a narrow depth of field with this lens since it's like a 90 millimeter macro i'm also having a little bit higher aperture value than 3.5 i'm having 5.6 or at least f4 so let's see what i can do but i'll try it out do a little bit different uh, compositions and different subjects to photograph and hopefully I'll get some nice results. I am also looking for a little bit of out of focus um, backgrounds as well. So see if I can find some nice uh, out of focus backgrounds along with the subjects I'm photographing. So I hope you stay tuned and enjoy the pictures I'm going to show you. moss. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called in English but I'm gonna say it's a seed. See that small thing there? So that's the subject. And if I take you in front of the camera here you can't almost not see it in there. So it's like in this little thing here there's this little seed. And I'm currently using the two times macro function right now. So I'm testing that out now to get a little bit closer in to this kind of uh, to this moss here. It's almost like a little small flower head in the moss that I'm focusing on right now. It's really small. It's not like I didn't even know it was ex it, it, it existed on that moss. But yeah, um, quite hard to find something to photograph in macro in the macro world. I think uh, my type of uh, liking with macro is mostly mushrooms and maybe insects, I guess. But uh, since it's this early in the spring, uh, I have neither of them to photograph. So I need to find something else. But I must say it's quite hard. 
but I, but I own this lens so I'm gonna use it a lot uh, in the future so I'm gonna, definitely gonna bring this along when I'm uh, when there's mushroom season that's for sure but yeah let's see how many good results I get with the two times macro this water on the surface of the leaf which I found to be a little bit of cool effect in a macro shot so right now I am doing a regular man, uh, magnification not the two times and um, I'm doing also focus stacking and what I found out with the focus stacking so here you can see it but this is not stacked this is just what I see in the camera right now but I found out in my focus stack to get the whole leaf hopefully get the whole leaf I needed to widen the focus uh, differential. So I had it on narrow, I think I had it on two or something earlier. You can see the menu here. I had this on two, but I widened it up to six and then I think I got the whole uh, leaf in focus. As well as I got some sunlight in from the side. So I think that one turned out to be quite good. So yeah. Let's see, let's see. So I'm trying out all different kind of uh, compositions and a way of setting up the macro lens right now. So this is kind of a shot from above and down. Hopefully that will turn out to be a little bit cool. But yeah, I've done a couple of tries now at macro photography at the forest floor. And I know there's this uh, rocky mountain here down with the fjord, which I want to try out before ending this episode. Or ending this field test. Because I know there's some moss growing on those rocks. So it might turn out to be a little bit uh, nice uh, composition or uh, subjects for macro photography. So I'm gonna head out, head down there before uh, I end this field test. It looks quite interesting. Maybe it can turn out to be some nice macro shots in this one. I think I'm gonna try the same technique as up in the forest that the camera is above and looking down. That's one. And then maybe I'll try to get some maybe yellow bokehish background as well. Like get some out of focus yellow background color. So let's see, I'm gonna set up and see what I get. All right. 
Welcome to my studio, or rather my living room. So I tested this lens now out in the field. I had a whole day with it. Um, I just have to say for now first that the timing of the year was not great. It was really early spring now in Norway. I didn't find any insects because the ground is too cold. There was no blooming, so I didn't have any nice flowers to take pictures of. And it's the beginning of autumn, so there's no mushrooms to find at all in, uh, on the ground. But this is when I got the lens, so I was really eager to test it out. So I got the pictures I got. So it's not the best, but hopefully it will show you what this lens can do and the differences uh, between super macro and regular uh, macro, one to one, and super macro is two to one. And uh, yeah. So I did some images with this and I have to say from the beginning this is a whole different type of macro than I'm used to. I'm used to more of a around 100mm full frame equivalent type of macro. I've used the, the Canon EF 100mm f2.8. I also used the earlier Olympus 60mm. I think that's also 2.8 but I've sold that a long time ago but I also used that one. And that's kind of the area type of macro I am most comfortable with. When I started with this one, I was quite surprised. You get super close to this lens. You, you, it's much closer than I'm used to. So it's a little bit outside my comfort zone. I'm not really, uh, not, I've not done much macro. So I'm not really good at macro. I'm quite amateur in macro photography. I've used it for to get a little bit closer to insects, I've used it for a little bit of uh, mushrooms and uh, flowers. But uh, this one you get super close, you get down to this kind of plants that you don't normally almost see with the naked eye, so that's really close. But yeah, I've tested it out with the OM-1 and I have to say it's quite fun to use the OM systems for this macro or for macro photography because it has this kind of built-in focus stacking function and I use it all the time with this lens because 180 millimeters or 90 millimeters on a micro four thirds f3.5 or even f5.6 or f8 it's still very narrow field of view so the area of focus is so narrow you kind of have to use focus stacking to get the whole subject in focus I think I'll show you a picture where I used focus stacking versus a picture I only used one image and you can see the difference between a stacked image and a non-stacked image. The stacked image will be a little bit more focused in because this camera produces um, when the, this camera stacks the image for you it kind of crops it in a little bit to cut away the things that didn't manage to align properly or stuff like that. So it's a little bit more focused in image. 
but you can I think I've, the function I had was 15 images it took 15 images and stacked it to one image you can choose I'm not sure how many pictures you can choose between but I think you can go from all from maybe just two three up to 15 I think 15 is the max and you can also choose the distance between each image in focus so if you how, how long of a distance is between each focus stage so I had one with very narrow and that was kind of too narrow so the whole subject did not get stacked properly so I increased it a little bit and then I got the whole subject stacked so you can play around with it. I'm not going to go through that function like in detail. I think there's probably a couple of YouTube videos already out that explains the focus stacking in the Olympus or OM system cameras. But it's a brilliant thing to have when you use this lens and it's almost a necessity to have as well. But yeah, it takes, I took 15 images, I get all the 15 RAWs to my computer but it also produce a JPEG which is stacked, which is stacked all the 15 images. So I use it all the time. And it's really fast at producing the images as well, so it's uh, no problem. But yeah, you can also use teleconverters on this lens. Uh, I forgot to use it. I, I brought it with me, I remember. But I forgot to use it because I was already so close that I didn't feel like I needed a teleconverter to get closer. I was already way out of my comfort zone with this when it came to uh, macro. But I think I'll try it out in the future. This is a lens that I have bought with my own money. I own it. Uh, it's not a sponsored uh, video, this one, and I'm not going to send it back. I'm not re renting it from anybody. So I'm going to use this lens in the future as well. I'm going to do some vlogs with this in the future. Uh, hopefully I'll do some uh, vlog of, uh, of uh, amphibians like frogs because uh, that type time of the year is coming soon where there's a lot of frogs in ponds protecting their uh, eggs and so on, so they're, they're much easier subjects to photograph during this time. So hopefully this will be enough uh, focal length for me. I've normally, in my previous vlogs, I've used tele lenses to get really close with uh, teleconverters on. But maybe I can get it close enough with this and a teleconverter. Otherwise, if I don't, I'll just do with a tele lens again. So if you follow my channel, uh, there will be some future vlogs on this lens as well. But yeah, overall, uh, I'm really happy with this lens. Uh, I think I'll also get the 60mm macro lens because it's a much more comfortable length for me. I think this one alone, if you're really into macro photography, this one alone is just not going to do it, I think. I think it's good to have more focal length options in macro. But this is super good for super macro. It's insanely how close you get. It's it's actually surprising. It also has the image stabilization, which is really great to have, uh, and as well as this kind of focus distancing uh, parameters as well. And I found them to be really useful at times because one of the downsides with this lens I found was that it focus hunt very easily or often. And, of, and of, of course I understand that in a macro world because the area of focus is so narrow and the distance between each subject can be pretty far so if you first lose the focus it might hunt from infinity and back before you find it again. So if you're really good at using this kind of uh, distance uh, parameters here on the lens I think you will avoid it. But I also think that that's something they can up, probably update in the future but yeah, hopefully they will fix it or make it a little bit better. But again, it was working most of the time, so it did not happen that often, so it wasn't like a really annoying thing, but it happened sometimes. Luckily, the subjects I was photographing uh, with on in the fields were all stills. There was no insects or moving subjects at all. But with moving subjects, I can understand it can be a little bit frustrating if it starts to hunt. But yeah, overall I recommend it and I'm looking forward to testing this one much more in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, review and I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.